This is Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Welcome to our video series for students and interested parents. Remember that these videos are not intended to replace consultation with a pediatrician. If we can be of assistance here, give us a call. We'll be happy to see you same day, 775-359-7111. Please remember we can't really help you over the internet or over the telephone. However, that's not good medical care and not ethical care. Today what we want to talk about is conjugated vaccines and what makes a vaccine conjugated. This is important in understanding what separates the conjugated vaccines from polysaccharide vaccines. This is also important in understanding some of the side effects of the, and contraindications of the conjugated vaccines. So what exactly are we dealing with? Well, the conjugated vaccines all are designed to deal with bacteria, which are encapsulated. So what I've drawn here looks like maybe three circles. This is a chromosome. This is a bacterium here. Okay, and this particular bacterium makes a polysaccharide capsid that goes around it. And I don't know how clear that is on the video there. Which bacteria do this? Well, the, the big ones, the ones we have vaccines for, are Haemophilus influenza type B. Haemophilus influenza non-typable doesn't have the capsid so it just has the um, the chromosome and then the cell wall remember bacteria have a cell wall to them not quite the same cell wall as plants but a cell wall nonetheless but doesn't have the capsid it is the polysaccharide capsule that goes around it that makes Haemophilus influenza type B invasive and so dangerous, whereas the non-typable is not invasive and not so dangerous. Pneumococcus, okay, and then meningococcus, or Neisseria meningitidis. Okay, those are the three big encapsulated vaccines that we have. Those are the three big invasive encapsulated bacteria that we deal with. So, for the last two, pneumococcus and meningococcus, for years, we were able to take this part here, the cell wall, and make, um, oops, sorry, not the cell wall. We were able to take a portion of this polysaccharide capsule and make a vaccine against it, okay? And that was the old Pneumovax. And quite honestly, I don't remember the name of the meningococcus vaccine because we didn't use it very often. Pneumovax was recommended forever and ever and ever to be given one dose at age 65, okay? The problem with these vaccines was the following. A, they did not provide lifelong immunity. Vaccine, or immunity waned over about 10 years because polysaccharides do not make a really good immune response. Your immune system is designed to respond first to protein, then to polysaccharides, then to nucleotide, then other things once in a while we'll respond to metals and we'll respond to uh, uh, lipids, etc. But your immune system is really designed to respond to a protein. So the polysaccharides would have temporary immunity, it was mostly IgM, and it would wane over time. More importantly, we knew from experimental studies that if we gave a booster dose of polysaccharide vaccine, you actually lowered the immunity. Your mean geometric titers went down. Now, clinically, how that meant the patient was going to do, because mean geometric titers, geometric mean titers, don't, aren't necessarily 100% of an indication of what's going on in the immune system. Uh, nobody was 100% sure, but nobody was too happy watching uh, titers drop. So, that brought us to the concept then of, and in the case of Haemophilus, I should say, they weren't able to make a decent polysaccharide vaccine at all, nothing that was effective or useful, um, because we needed, immun uh, needed immunity to last for years in young children, and they didn't seem to respond. So, 
what they came up with was the concept of a conjugate vaccine. Take a piece of polysaccharide, link it to a protein carrier molecule, thus getting the immune system to respond to the combination. This vaccine provided high geometric mean titers of IgG, not IgM, meaning memory, meaning amnestic response. Okay? Lifelong immunity, much more potent immunity. These were vaccines that children, infants responded to. So how did we do it? Well, they tried all kinds of proteins. People tried albumin that didn't work out so well, caused a little too much of, a, of an immune response because albumin is just a little too potent of a carrier molecule. Mm -hmm. Several things have been used over the years, but what people use for the three vaccines that we use is um, diphtheria toxoid. And they don't use the whole protein. They use just a portion of the diphtheria protein. And it depends on the vaccine as to how big of a section they use. Okay. This provides lifelong immunity. This is a much more potent vaccine. Okay. Which is why we have now replaced the old Pneumovax by and large with Prevnar. Because Prevnar is a conjugated vaccine, and Prevnar is now FDA approved to be given to people age 65 and above. You can give booster doses of this vaccine and maintain immunity. Giving a dose of the old Pneumovax at 65 and having it wane in 10 years is great if you plan on being dead by 75 years of age. But who needs protection against pneumococcus more? A 75-year-old or a 65-year-old? I'll argue the weaker, frailer, older 75-year-old. But you can't boost him with the Pneumovax. You can with the Prevnar. So now you don't have to plan on dying in 10 years. You can plan on living as long as you want and keep getting your booster doses. Um, however, there is one weird contraindication that comes up with all of these conjugate vaccines. And that's anaphylaxis to a previous dose of diphtheria toxoid because they all have as a component not an ingredient in the soup but actually linked to the to the polysaccharide capsule chemically bound a piece of diphtheria toxoid so if you're anaphylactic to diphtheria toxoid that doesn't do real well for you when we give you pneumococcus clinically the good news is there are not a whole lot of people that are anaphylactic to diphtheria toxoid in 15 years, I've yet to meet one. Doesn't mean they're not out there. I'm sure they are. But uh, good chance you're going to go an entire career and never meet such a patient. But it is a contraindication you need to remember because it's kind of an oddball contraindication. With regard to pneumo pneumococcus, the only other contraindication is anaphylaxis to any of the components of the vaccine, meaning to a previous dose of vaccine. Uh, but this one's weird because maybe you never got... Prevnar, but you got DTAP and you, you reacted severely to that. So I hope this explains some things for you and makes some things make sense. This is Dr. Windish. If I can be of assistance, remember we're available at 359-7111. That's area code 775. We'd be happy to get you in for a same-day appointment. We'll see you next time.